Hello, Next. Welcome to our breakout session, where we'll talk about the six incredibly powerful GK capabilities you may have missed. It's a fun session packed with cutting edge tech and a demo of our newest capabilities. My name is Jerzy, and today with me is Roman. Both of us are product managers on Google Kubernetes Engine team. Together, we'll learn how using GKE and adopting the right culture can help customers like Yubi, a Japan-based healthcare technology startup that automatically generates medical records using an AI-powered patient questionnaire app, achieve 20% saving while deploying to hundreds of medical institutions and improving availability. Or Scopeworth, a media platform for whom auto-scaling on GKE helps match capacity with the real-time demand. The result is 99% uptime and 50% reduction in infrastructure cost while removing operational burdens. Now they can invest more time on coding and less on managing the resources. As well as Mr. Cooper, an industry leading mortgage service provider that now can pack their nodes to achieve 90% CPU load. In fact, Forrester conducted a study in which they created a composite organization based on the GKE customers and concluded the following total economic impact numbers of GKE with expected investment payback in under six months for a typical customer. Check their study to learn more. Over to Roman. Thank you, Yeje. Uh, this is great. Our team is on a critical mission a mission to empower you, the user, to never again waste time and money on infrastructure you don't actually use. When you run workloads on Google Kubernetes Engine, we know you've made the choice in favor of simplicity, efficiency, security, and scalability. But we also know that falling for the known efficiency pitfalls is easy when you're in charge of running infrastructure at scale with its endless number of components and possibilities. In six years of GKE's existence, we learned that four major challenges make your life hard. The first challenge is cultural. Many teams that embrace the public cloud aren't used to the pay-as-you-go billing style and frequently don't fully understand the environment their apps are running on, in this case, Kubernetes. The FinOps movement, which is getting lots of attention recently, is all about evolving such a culture. One of the FinOps best practices is to provide teams with real-time information about their spending and their business impact. Small things like this have considerable impact on company's culture, resulting in a more balanced cost optimization equation. The second challenge is bean packing. How well you pack applications onto your Kubernetes nodes. The better you pack apps onto nodes, the more you save. Then we have the app right sizing, the ability to set appropriate resource requests and auto scale applications deployed in the cluster. The more precisely you set resources on your pods, the more reliably your applications will run. And in the vast majority of cases, the more space you'll save in the cluster. And the last challenge is not scaling down your cluster during off-peak hours. Ideally, to save money during low demand periods, for example, at night, your cluster should be able to scale down following the actual demand. However, in some cases, Scaling down doesn't happen as expected due to workloads or cluster configurations that block cluster autoscaler. By themselves, each of those are tricky, but together, this is a complex problem. In our experience, most of our provisioned environments have at least two of the following challenges at hand. But fear not, we're here to help. Let's look at some of the incredibly powerful GKE capabilities you might have missed that will take you a step closer to running GKE at scale cost effectively. Jersey, over to you. And tell us about your favorite top three. Thank you, Roman. I certainly have my own top three. Let me focus on some of the existing top of the line GA capabilities. And here they are. Autopilot. Traditional Kubernetes expects you the user to understand and manage the control plane, worker nodes, security configuration, upgrades, scaling, and availability. GKE, on the other hand, is a truly managed service that helps you focus on your business. The best and most intelligent way of using Kubernetes today is by activating GKE Autopilot, a mode of operation that automatically manages the most complex aspects of your infrastructure configuration. If, however, 
the user needs more control of their clusters, she can choose a standard GKE mode of operation. You can think of modes of GKE as the level of control customers have over a given GKE cluster. And the best part yet, you can mix and match modes of operation between different clusters. So you choose GKE standard for advanced configuration, flexibility over the cluster infrastructure, or GKE Autopilot to have Google provision and manage entire underlying infrastructure. User is in full control and can break glass, converting Autopilot clusters into standard. These are just a few examples of how Autopilot does things differently. Autopilot clearly wins as a hands-off Kubernetes experience because it optimizes for production like Kubernetes expert, provides strong security posture, be lets Google become your SRE, reducing the day two operation, improves resource efficiency, and it's still Kubernetes, still GKE. But how does this all play into GKE cost optimization? GKE Autopilot shares a four-way scalability capability with the GKE standard. Same well-known tech as horizontal pod auto-scaling or vertical pod auto-scaling apply and serve as a frame of cost reference. Users are still in full control about how their workloads will scale and behave. However, the infrastructure is now managed fully by the Autopilot, and that has significant optimization implications for everything you plan to do with GKE. Remember early in the conversation, we talked about the four main challenges of cost optimization. With Autopilot, you pay for the compute resources requested. With our new paper pod model, paying for nodes remains a thing of the past. That means that bin packing is not a problem anymore. How cool is that? Not only do you get a managed, hands-off experience that lets you focus on your business while improving your security and operational posture, you also get rid of one of the most challenging aspects of the cost optimization. And if you thought this is not enough, how about not having to pay for the compute overhead cost of running the OS and the cost of running Kubernetes, such as Cube system components? Scalability is a big subject. We graduated 15K to GA in 2021, which for the vast majority of users removes scalability as a constraint in cluster design. Why does it matter? Thanks to operating in one large cluster, you can simplify microservices lifecycle management, uh, easier absorb larger spikes in resource demand, and shorter the time to process data for batch workloads. As the result, you can combine the services of your organization into one or just a few GKE clusters that provide better utilization and, in effect, will cost less. Combine this with our cost-optimized machine types such as E2 or Tau for even better price performance ratio compared to general purpose VMs. Next is the node auto provisioning, a feature that is internally powering all of Autopilot. But what if you can't yet run Autopilot? Bin packing, that annoying issue that requires you to either make sure your workload fit well inside of a machine site or manually create and manage multiple notebooks and play with affinity that can quickly get out of control and become an operational bottleneck. But there is a simple option. Configure node auto-provisioning. Node auto provisioning is the next generation of our cluster auto scaler that not only knows to scale your cluster using the chosen VM types, but also knows to create entire node pools from scratch that are best suited for your specific workloads. Node auto provisioning makes GKE clusters fully automatic provisioning relevant machine types like GPUs and TPUs and removing node pools when not needed. 
Node auto provisioning is also integrated with vertical pod auto scaling and provisions optimal node pools ahead of vertical pod auto scaling updates to ensure quick action. In practice, that means that you're more likely to have VMs that are right size for your workloads than what you get with the manual provisioning. All right, Roman, those are my top three. What about yours? Thank you, Yeje. I definitely have my own list as well. Let me go through some of our latest additions that we believe are important for everyone to know and understand. We know that with Autopilot and Node Auto Provisioning, bin packing is a non-existent or considerably smaller of a problem. But what about application right-sizing? While well, app right-sizing is a challenging dimension to tackle, we've been making significant progress to make it simpler for you. Let's look at the latest preview for the multidimensional pod autoscaling. Horizontal pod autoscaler is a term that is familiar to most or everyone using GKE. Horizontal pod autoscaling scales your pods horizontally, adding replicas when certain thresholds or conditions are met. HPA works hand in hand with cluster autoscaler or node auto provisioner, making sure that resources requested by containers can be accommodated on an existing node. If this is not the case, new nodes are being added to the node pool. However, that means that the users deploying containers might, might, must have expert knowledge of the exact amount of resources to be configured for their workloads. Based on what we know of, of how Kubernetes is used, the right resource choice is a true challenge that few master. This is why we've introduced the vertical pod autoscaling, a capability that understands the true resource usage of your containers and recommends or directly adjusts the requests to get them as close as possible to what your containers actually need to operate properly. However, HPA and VPA did not always play well together. As HPA had targets such as CPU, VPA had trouble understanding either resources under consumption was a choice or an effect. This is why we've introduced the multidimensional pod autoscaler, now on preview. With a single object, GKE can now manage both horizontal and vertical autoscaling. While HPA continues to add or remove pod replicas based on CPU, vertical pod autoscaling works on memory, one of the most over-provisioned resources, to adjust it to requests that meet best your container actual usage needs. With this, further simplifying the app rate sizing and the off-peak hour over-provisioning challenges. Now, what if we told you that you could improve your GKE cluster utilization meaningfully with a single change? Please meet the optimized utilization profile, now in GA. If your applications are ready to tolerate a more aggressive cluster autoscaler behavior, this is the feature to try. The optimized utilization profile is the second in line of our autoscaling profiles, giving users choice of a more active autoscaling and scheduling behavior. The well-known balanced profile optimizes for availability. It scales down idle nodes only after 10 minutes. Workloads are also spread as much as possible by the scheduler. Optimized utilization profile, on the other hand, strikes a balance between availability and cost efficiency. Nodes scale down after one minute of being idle. Aside, scheduler tries to bin pack pods from different deployments as much as possible to add scaling down speed and statistically maximize your chances of having empty nodes that can be easily removed. Where it takes the balanced profile as much as 10 to 30 minutes to scale down nodes after an abrupt stop in requests, it takes optimized utilization profile one to three minutes to achieve the same result. The way this is achieved is reducing the number of intervals and thresholds that increase the sensitivity of autoscaling behavior to set load thresholds, such as scale down times, delay after add, and scan intervals. In our tests, Optimized Utilization Profile shows up as being one of the capabilities that you could adopt for significantly improved outcomes. We've now had a look at five great GKE features that help improve the balance between cost and performance out of the box. But how do you even know if anything needs to be improved? And what is the scale of the opportunity at hand? How do you help your team take a step forward into solving for the cultural challenges of GKE cost optimization? I am thrilled to introduce the GKE Cost Optimization Insights, now available in preview across all regions and GKE cluster types. 
GK Cost Optimization Insights give you, you a single entry point into the GK Cost Optimization journey right inside the user interface. Let's see how it works. Let's start with a blank project and create the first cluster. For this, we will use the recently released Cost Optimized Cluster Setup Guide. The Setup Guide helps build a GKE standard cluster with all the best infrastructure level cost optimization features built right in. The cluster is now created. But how do we know where we stand on the cluster resource usage efficiency? With the new cost optimization tab, discovering this becomes a no-brainer. In one click, we see all the key information for the cluster, such as used, requested, or allocatable resources for memory and CPU. Cost Optimization Insights works across standard and autopilot, should you have one or hundreds of clusters. Let's add a number of other clusters to see it better. Now, bin packing is not a challenge when you use autopilot. This is made very clear in the view, differentiating the standard and autopilot clusters on the type of metrics you should care about. In an autopilot cluster, only the used and requested resources matter, while with standard, you should also care about your allocatable capacity. Spotting your cost optimization opportunities out of the box has never been easier. And with a time picker, you can even see the data across the time horizon of your choice. CPU and memory aggregations in time give you visibility of your cluster sizes and running capacity at all times. Cluster insights help spot bin packing, app right sizing, and potentially off-peak hour op optimization opportunities. But which of the workloads are the largest contributors to resource consumption? To help answer this, you have now access to cost optimization insights at workload level two Let's deploy a number of workloads to various clusters to see this in action. There are now multiple deployments available. Let's also top it up with one of the offerings from the marketplace. As everything is deployed now, within moments, we start seeing insights for workloads, such as used, requested, and resource limits for each individual deployment. With this new view, understanding application right-sizing opportunities becomes considerably less of a challenge. By looking at used versus requested capacity, all teams can keep an eye on optimization opportunities for their individual workloads. And that, in turn, helps with one more cost optimization aspect, building a solid cost optimization culture across your entire team. Watch this space. We're just getting started and we're looking forward to adding more capabilities that would improve visibility and provide recommendations for GKE cost optimization. That was it from my side, uh, Jersey. Take it from here. Thank you, Roman. And big thanks to our audience for staying with us today. And remember, we're on a mission to empower you to never again waste time and money on infrastructure you don't actually use. So here's our call to action. If you're only getting started with GKE, check Forrester Total Economic Impact Report to see what impact GKE may have for your business. Are you already deployed and going full speed? Follow the six things we discussed today and see how this advances your GKE capabilities. Have you already done all of this? Come partner with us for more in-depth collaboration. Get in touch with your account representative or reach us via media channels. If you want to learn more about GKE cost optimization, follow these links. Thank you.